Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to War in the Pacific, Admiral's Edition, our Let's Play series against, uh, oh my goodness, I was going to say XCRG, Lieutenant Rainbow Slash. Uh, we are playing uh, yet another game here of our War in the Pacific series. It is April, not game, another day. It is April 4th of 1942, so we're into the spring of 42, and we're starting to turn off with a Japanese submarine shooting some torpedoes off at some tankers of ours thankfully those torpedoes all miss looks like it's the i3 uh, hopefully they don't get another attack on this uh on this task force as it moves east back to the u.s the japanese submarine is obviously sort of shadowing these guys they fired at them a couple of turns back also and i don't think they sank anything but i can't really remember uh, meanwhile, we've also got some Japanese landing parties coming ashore at Cebu uh, in the Philippines here. They're trying to consolidate and sort of finish off our position in the Philippines. Our supply situation there is not good um, anywhere. Our strength near Bataan is probably still strong enough to hold out for a little while, but the problem is we don't really have a lot of supplies. So, like, we're not going to fall in the next week, I don't think. There's any way that would happen, but uh, I don't know how much longer we're going to hold out, you know. One week for sure, two weeks maybe, that seems a little bit... Uh, a little bit optimistic, but I guess we'll see. Uh, meanwhile, we've got some Japanese uh, troops landing again at Cebu. So just a couple more landing parties coming in here. Um, and uh, U.S. submarine firing against Japanese destroyers near the Shortlands. But uh, unfortunately, those torpedoes uh, failed to hit the target. Oh, shit. Do I not have... One second, guys. I always change this setting in my board but then i always forget to change it back i don't know you should be getting desktop audio mix minus isn't on maybe it's just a little bit low you think I, you could find the job in the u.s if you get visas like if you just showed up I have no idea what your education background is, uh, Derby, or what the visa process is personally. I've got no idea how any of that works. Usually it's much easier if you already have the job before you travel because the, the employer who's hiring you will work to get you a work visa. I think it's much more difficult if you just try and show up without a job already lined up, but I, I don't really know. All right, so we've got some Japanese fighters sweeping over Port Blair here. 32 zeros coming in from Burma. That's a pretty big signal that he's going to be ramping up the air war in the Indian Burma theater, uh, where we have uh, we actually surprised and shot down a few of his uh, naval bombers last turn with our cap over Rangoon. He was going for, I think, our bombardment task force. So we've had a couple of good strikes on some of his bombers. I think two attacks, one on his bombers sort of in Java, and then one in uh, Burma the last couple of turns. But in this case, 30 zeros first five buffaloes. The buffaloes stood no chance. Japanese sweep them from the sky. Um, air attacks at Batavia here, mostly just fighter sweeps. We don't have any of our few remaining fighters up, but you can see they're going with overwhelming strength here. 30 plus Oscars coming in here, nine plus zeros, another 24 Oscars escorting some 27 Nell bombers. He's definitely making sure not to make the mistake of going in unescorted again. By the way, guys, let me know if the audio is a little bit high. I'm right on the red line in OBS, and I, I want to make sure it's not like overly loud. I can adjust that if it is. Uh, but we've got bombs falling there. We've also got some Japanese Bettys coming in here at Darwin. So we have a troop convoy coming, or not troop, we have a supply convoy coming into Darwin. Looks like he's hitting them with bombers out of Timor. Uh, and they appear to be dropping bombs, not torpedoes. Um, so some of these ships apparently are dead in the water. I, I wonder if some of them may have run out of fuel. Hit one of them with a 60 kilogram bomb, another one with a 250 kilogram bomb. So this light cargo ship is probably toast. Uh, but because he's using bombs instead of torpedoes, not nearly as deadly as it could have been. Twelve Bettys could easily sink two or three cargo ships with torpedoes, but they probably just got the one light cargo ship with the two bomb hits. The 60 kilogram bomb wouldn't do much, but the 250 kilogram bomb certainly would. You can see their payload is two 250 kilogram bombs and four 60 kilogram bombs. They were coming in at 6,000 feet, so it's not a skip bomb attack or anything like that. Lower altitude so that they can be relatively accurate, but 6,000, they're still not going to be super accurate as we saw there. And even against unmaneuvering targets there, they didn't do a whole lot of damage. We've also got some Bettys come into Batavia here. On, so the first raid came out of probably Palembang. This raid looks like it's coming out of Borneo. All right.
right, so I adjusted the sound effects down a little bit. That should help. Okay. Continuing to bomb those troops near Moresby. More sweeping over Batavia. More bombing here. This one with some army bombers. I don't see a direction. Well, maybe it's southeast. These guys might already be based on Java, perhaps. Which would be an interesting decision for him, because that wouldn't require quite a lot of supply to be pumped in there to the forward lines, rather than using supply at rear echelon bases. Okay. 17 lilies coming in against the troops north of Moresby. 26 sallies going against troops on the northern tip of Sumatra. A lot of sort of catch-up bombing or training bombing, if you will. Just sort of plastering some uh, isolated units with no actual air cover, you know, supporting them. So that's going to help him get his experience up. Fifteen more sallies coming in. He's really pounding Batavia. We'll have to see if there's any progress loss on the trench building there. We were almost up to a level four fort there. Okay. Recon hurricanes over Tavoy. I sent those out there to see what we might see out that way. We did see the Corregidor did sink from its damage. Catalina saying they're spotting 10 Japanese ships near Suva, but I'm guessing that's a miss, a miss report. Second range of airstrikes here in the PM phase. That was a very active air operation phase in the AM. We'll kind of fast forward through here a little bit. Japanese cruisers bombarding at Ambon and some destroyers as well. They're trying to weaken that force of ours down here, get them to uh, get overwhelmed. We do have that one Australian battalion there that's really helping those troops hang in there. More troops coming ashore at Cebu. Okay, Japanese uh, bombardment attack at Quilin. Uh, they haven't really made any progress here with their bombardments. I don't think they might have brought a new division in here. I feel like they had three or four before. Now it looks like they have five. I accidentally clicked through there, but the bombardment didn't really do anything. Meanwhile, they did destroy this armored unit here to the southeast of Batavia that was acting as kind of a blocking force for our troops at Batavia to buy us some time. Deliberate attack at Ambon here against the Molkan garrison and the Sparrow Battalion here. They didn't succeed in taking the base. They did get one-to-one -one odds, so they did inflict more casualties on us than than uh, us on them. But they weren't able to take the base at Ambon yet. Deliberate attack at Kaigan here. This is interesting. These troops down here have very little to almost no supply. The 102nd Filipino Infantry Division is really the only combat effective force left. We've got a little bit left of the 102nd Regiment. Uh, but against a, a sort of a hodgepodge of Japanese attacking forces, a bunch of naval guard units, some SNLF units, a couple of infantry regiments here. We'll see if they can overwhelm us here. We've got pretty good terrain on the defensive. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised they haven't done a lot of bombardment there. I don't think we have much in the way of coastal guns, but... Um All right, let's fast forward through here. Um, Newhauser, what are you asking? Sorry, I didn't, I didn't quite, I must have said something that I don't know what you're referring to. But the attack at, on Mindanao failed, so that's good news for us. 1,500 Japanese casualties, 23 squads destroyed, 81 disabled. We actually lost more squads destroyed, 57 versus their 23, but we only had 19 disabled. So at the end of the day, they're weaker tomorrow than we are, um, relatively. They grew more weak than we did. We did lose 15 guns, nine of those destroyed. Now, our troops are pretty much out of supply, so they're kind of starving, but the good news is here, there was no report here. We didn't get a negative combat modifier for low supply, so at least the key units must have still had sufficient supply. 
The Japanese didn't reduce the fort levels, and we inflicted, you know, a hundred more squad losses on the uh, on the enemy, which is going to weaken these regiments and SNLF units and guard units even more. So they were already kind of shot up from a couple of failed assaults there, and with this next failed assault, that's only going to lead them to being more shot up. We, we can't hold here too long. We'll eventually start starving out, and as, well, and as soon as he knows that we're low on supply, he'll just keep attacking, and we'll, we'll die relatively rapidly. But uh, it's good news, because it may buy us a couple of days where he doesn't think to attack, and maybe he shifts over to a bombardment-only approach, or maybe he's got to spend, you know, a month refreshing these two infantry regiments, the 4th and the 16th, uh, which could slow down, you know, deploying pretty good army units elsewhere so that's a good good result here yeah the more resources he spends the less he has elsewhere exactly like so all the casualties we can inflict if we can really shoot up a couple of regiments that can be a real positive thing for us moving forward here it just slows him down elsewhere just like, you know, delaying him by a month at the Philippines, shooting up a couple of key divisions there probably slows his conquest of Burma down. The loss of two extra infantry regiments in the South Pacific may slow down any attempt to push down on the Suva line or invade Australia or, you know, take Burma out. So every bit, of, every delay helps. You know, we've got a bunch of attacks on unoccupied bases here that are obviously going to succeed. He's just sort of shoring up his rear. Yep. It, it does cost supply as well. Now, that's not too big of a drain on the Japanese economy. They can produce well more than they need, but it, it's still another thing he's got to pour resources and economic points into that could be directed at other things. Also, all the supplies he spends back in Japan means more resources that he has to ship forward from China and other conquered bases um, so then that in turn uses fuel to fuel those those ships that have to travel and it's sort of a cascade effect. So can he get a bunch more resources and supply out of China? 100% he can, but it means using more fuel by cargo ships to transfer that supply to the U to Japanese home islands. Japan is a little bit less rich in fuel than resources. It's all sort of a a, a cascade effect, if you will. All right, so let's jump into the save. So first things first, let's take a look at the Intel screen here. So we can see that uh, this turn, the Allies lost five aircraft in air-to-air -air combat. The Japanese lost zero. The Allies lost five on the ground. The Japanese did lose three to flak and nine operational losses. So 12 aircraft on their end, 10 on ours. Our five aircraft in the air, however, more likely to lose pilots than the Japanese scenarios. Although the flak losses could could kill pilots here. You can see the Allies lost all five of those scrambling fighters over Port Blair, uh, so those were all shot down. Japan, meanwhile, lost three VALs, two to flak, one operational. Uh, they lost two Oscars to operational losses, so nothing too bad here for the Japanese, but still not a, not a perfect turn for them. We lost two, two pilots wounded, one killed in action. Um, I'm not sure if any of them were aces. I don't think any of them were. Uh, this guy's an H-81 pilot. This guy's a P-40 pilot. Yeah, so none of our aces are Buffalo pilots. We do have one Buffalo pilot here, which I think is in that group that I got shot up. Um, he's got four kills. I think that's where... No, he's not. It said he's flying a Buffalo, but this unit's flying Hurricanes in Rangoon, so... Uh, did the BC defy all logic and win? The BC... I'm, I'm not sure what you meant. Three passes and OP killed the battleships. What are you guys talking about? We didn't kill any battleships off of Nomaya. It was a while back. We had a cruiser engagement off of Nomaya where our heavy cruisers engaged Japanese battleships. We shot them up a bit. We did some systems damage, but we didn't sink any of them. All right, so Darwin was hit by Japanese bombers here this last turn. We did send some transports through here. So you can see there were 11 ships originally. We're down to 10. All of these ships, however, are fueled up, and all of these ships um, can now go ahead. They are docked, and they're all unloading their cargo. They haven't really started yet. It looks like they refueled first, but we should be able to start getting this 14,000 fuel 
off of these uh, off of these ships and into Darwin, which is low on supply. It's down to just about three thousand supply. Now I don't have any fighters to actually run cover over Darwin, so that's a bit of a concern. I'm thinking what might make sense is throw some wildcats um, or some uh, some hurricanes or whatever we have on the eastern coast of Australia into Catherine, and then we can fly long range cap. You know, it's only like four hexes up so we can probably throw a long range cap up to darwin to shoot up those japanese bombers i imagine you know he could probably send escorts down but i think his fighters are mostly elsewhere the problem is it probably takes two turns for me to get any fighters in there i'd have to switch these guys over to using tanks and it's kind of a long flight up to Catherine, 36 range i don't even think we can get that far we've got some uh some fighters at charterstown i think right no Karen's no. I don't really have any fighters I can get up there. It's probably going to be two or three days before I can get one up there. I've got some Kitty Hawks down here. They can fly twenty six, but but I don't think they can get up to Darwin here. It doesn't look like it. So it's going to take a couple of turns to get some some, some aircraft up there. Okay. Either way, we did lose the one cargo ship. If we lose two or three more, I mean, I really just want to make sure we get like 10,000 supplies into Darwin because the problem is Darwin does have road supply that comes from the Australian East Coast, but it's super inefficient because these are really bad roads to try and transfer supplies over. So you really do need to send some some shipping in there. The problem is in the east, it's cut off by Port Moresby, uh, and in the north, it's cut off by Timor. So our best hope really is to send some cargo ships along the, the northern coast of Australia, kind of hug the coast. And we did manage to do that and get into Darwin. This is the first time we came under attack from those uh, those bombers. But um, we did lose one. Uh, for the situation in at Port Blair, two, I think it was, was it two days ago or three days ago, uh, we spotted some Japanese carriers at Singapore. I think they were the mini Kidubutai. And we also had an intel report that Japanese uh, engineers were on their way to Port Blair. So presumably the Japanese carriers could be somewhere around here. We haven't spotted them yet. We do have a submarine in, the, in that path. But they could be kind of approaching, you know, maybe past Georgetown or on their way up to Port Blair if the carriers want to go that way. We do have our own carriers headed that direction as well. So I do have the, um, the three, actually four American carriers and one British carrier. So we got the Lexington, Yorktown Enterprise, and then I want to say we have the Saratoga and the Indomitable split into two task forces, and they're on their way up to Colombo. They'll refuel at Colombo, and then they'll sort of shift east and sort of hang out in the Bay of Bengal, sort of screening Port Blair. I don't want to put them up against, you know, 30 plus, 40 plus, 50 plus enemy land based zeros, but if we can keep them out here to see if the enemy does dash forward with any warships, we could potentially give those warships a bloody nose, or maybe even the mini Kadubatai. Now, if he sends the whole Japanese heavy carrier fleet, then we'll probably have to pull back. But uh, if we can get some quick wins on troops heading into Blair, that would be great. The one problem is they're still kind of far away. They're still all the way down here south of the Coast Coast Islands. So the Japanese are probably going to beat us to the punch. But I am moving up in that direction. And if the Japanese are moving a little bit more slowly, we might be able to get in, them in there and give them a little bit of a bloody nose. If we can't, then we might at least be able to prevent Port Blair from being much more than a reconnaissance post for the Japanese. Japanese by sort of suppressing the airfield there uh, and making sure that they don't leverage what is a pretty good airfield here. Actually, it's not, but it could be. It's a level one airfield, but it could be up to a level five. So we, we could use our, our aircraft to sort of keep that base suppressed and keep the sea lanes into Rangoon open from Japanese uh, Japanese attack. Um, refueling is questionable, Newhauser. So like we can get up here and, um, and we could get to Blair, but the problem is in the event that we end up in a battle, the AI commander is going to generally switch you into flank speed, and we will be well below 50% of our fuel by the time we get up to Port Blair. And so we'd really be playing with fire, trying to fight an enemy a task force if low on fuel. If the situation warrants it, we could potentially divert east and try and intercept the Japanese, um, but I just think it's a really, really risky idea um, where you could get 
you know, ships basically stranded low on fuel and then just be sitting ducks. Believe me, I've seen it happen. I sank an American carrier in a play by email game against Belugan just that way. Um, he, he flanked his, his carriers and ended up getting one of them sort of stuck isolated. And I was able to just destroy it. Um, my own carriers ended up in a similar situation. And fortunately for me, he didn't know it. And so I sat there for like three days taking system damage while I tried to rush some oilers to go, go help them out. What's the idea in the South Pacific? Yeah, the South Pacific is very quiet right now. We've seen some Japanese submarines going after some of our tankers here moving east. So these guys here got, uh, I don't think it was actually this task force. Uh, might have been these guys over here that were heading east back to the, uh, to the U.S. here. Got hit by uh, some Japanese submarines, but they didn't actually do any damage here. So uh, okay with that. We know he's got some Bettys and Nels on New Caledonia. So that does kind of require that we divert our shipping south. Uh, to avoid that. But the South Pacific has been pretty quiet. The Japanese have taken control of New Caledonia, the New Hebrides, and sort of, uh, you know, are, are a major thorn in our supply line to Australia based out of there. Um, you know, really forces us to divert cargo ships almost as far south as, as New Zealand here to get into Australia. But um, other than that, it's been relatively quiet. We've got a couple of divisions on Suva. So we've got the U.S. 161st Infantry Regiment, the New Zealand 8th Infantry Brigade, uh, and then we've got some support units, some field artillery units, some base force units, about a total of 307 assault value, but these are really high-quality units. They're, none of them are militia here, same for the New Zealanders. Uh, at Nadi adjacent, also on Fiji, We've got the 1st Australian Division and the 7th Australian Brigade, so we've got two units there. Now, the Aussies are militias, I believe, and so their quality is a little bit less, but they are a full-blown division there, so we've got about uh, 365 assault value there, about 500 total on, on the island of uh, Fiji altogether, um, or between Suva and Nadi. Uh, we also have some troops on Pago. We've been digging in and trying to build up Vavu, because I want Vavu to sort of be a link in the chain between Pago and Suva to sort of shuttle aircraft back and forth between these three. And then we've also started building up an airfield on Tongatapu, um, and uh, we've got a small force there uh, to try and build this base up to, again, be sort of another interlinking chain in our, uh, in our defenses there. We forward deployed some PBY Catalinas up to Wallace Island. We have a single AVP there providing them the aviation support they need to try and get better recon in, in sort of the uh, Ellis Islands and Canton Island and, and Santa Cruz Islands or wherever these guys can reach to get a little bit more visibility to what the Japanese might have in the area. Could I take the air unit in Suva off strat mode? Yeah, I probably should do that. They just arrived recently, but um, probably should also change their headquarters or their objective, that is. So that way they start planning for the proper objective. And then we've got some 37 millimeter anti-aircraft guns and some 75 millimeter guns, 16, 75 millimeter guns. That's some pretty damn effective flak, I think. Okay. So that's the situation in the South Pacific. Like I said, not a ton going on there. Uh, we do have the Hornet at Pearl Harbor, but she's currently refitting to a, a better, uh, an upgraded, uh, op, right, I don't know, upgraded equipment suite or whatever, whatever you have. So you can see the Hornet is the one carrier we don't have in the West. The Hornet is the only carrier not going up to Burma because she's been deployed relatively recently. She's refitting after conversion. She'll be ready in four days, it looks like. So, you know, potentially we could do some active operations in the South Pacific. Um, the real question is where the Japanese are going to deploy their carriers because I'm not sure I'm ready. My carriers themselves are a little bit spread out. Not sure I'm ready for like an actual carrier action quite yet. Um, you know, I'd like to be able to concentrate my forces. If I can pick off the mini Kidu Butai at Blair, I will gladly do that. If I can pick off some cruisers, I will gladly do that. But one of the reasons I'm deploying those ships to Burma is because I've got better reconnaissance in that area. So I should see the enemy coming and be able to pick my spot and engage if I want to. We also did recently receive the 9th and 7th Marine regiments in uh, San Diego. And so these guys are going to be a real nice uh, boost to our surface, uh, our land combat strength. Um, and so we're sort of sitting there. We also are sitting on some political points, uh, potentially to unlock the 27th Infantry Division, which is currently sitting in uh, Los Angeles. Uh, we've got enough points here. They cost 1580. We've got 1883 
left of political points. So we could basically open them up to any particular headquarters of our choice. The main problem is shipping at the moment. We just don't have the shipping to transfer these new units and regiments forward. And so they're kind of sitting back in rear areas because that's all I can do right now. Um, in terms of China, we didn't see a lot going on there. Uh, he is driving west with a large force here trying to threaten the flank at Cyan. You can see here we have pulled our troops south of Cyan back. He's now trying to pursue into Cyan itself with some of these ground units, which could be kind of interesting because they're going to be in the open. And so if he's going to try and pursue me into Cyan, if I've got a bunch of my troops still here, we could potentially turn on him and, and, and attack him and uh, and give him a little bit of a bloody nose, potentially. Uh, but if I also raise two of my United troops north out of Cyan too soon, he could race in here and cut these like four or five cores off if I'm a little bit too uh, too short uh, short sighted. So perhaps I should tell some of these units to stop moving because they'll probably get out of here in the next day or two. Um, and that may open the Cyan up a little bit too much. Meanwhile, at Quilin, we did have the Japanese bombard us there again. Didn't really accomplish anything. Our garrison here is pretty strong. We've got good terrain and decent defenses here. We also do have an additional two cores on the way from the north. So I think we're in decent shape. We're in no strength. We're in no condition to counterattack and drive them out of the uh, of the base. But we are, I think, a long way from being able to be overrun. Okay. How limited are transports? Total number or just a point factor? Uh, total number, I guess, like in terms of aircraft. No, it's all based on real ships and real units and real aircraft. Sort of a one-to-one -one ratio. Meanwhile, you can see we've got about 100 aircraft at Rangoon. They're almost all fighters. Uh, we stood some of them down to get their fatigue levels down. We'll probably need to stand this lead uh, Air Cobra unit down. It's fatigue levels over 20, and this Hurricane unit's fatigue levels over 30. They're going to take a lot of ops losses if we don't drop them down, but we can swap them out with these P-40s and this one other Hurricane Squadron all sub-10. We did give our bombers at Mandalay a couple of days off here to recover from the ops losses they took when they bombed uh, I think it was Mulman a few turns ago. So we've still got the 7th and 5th Bomber groups, the 88th uh, Recon Squadron and 23rd Bomber Squadron. Both have more than almost 50% or more of their aircraft currently under repair. But there's three other squadrons here that are, are almost perfectly at full strength. So, you know, maybe we send the bombers off. We are trying to get the airfield expanded a little bit so we can we can launch better raids out of these bases. Um, some of these troops coming over the mountains to Burma. Recon of Tavoy shows nothing in terms of enemy aircraft. Chiang Mai seems pretty light on aircraft also. What about Batavia? Where are we at here? We're at 92% for construction still. So I don't know that we're making any progress there. Still seven or eight days away from getting to 100%, but those those aerial bombardments are uh, digging into our uh, progress there. We could try and raid uh, Bangkok Southern, but I can't escort anything out that, that far, so the bombers would be going in unescorted. Sophronia Zero, thanks for the follow. Blackout, thanks for the follow as well. Tanker is moving southeast. That's interesting. Moving tank. If I could hit these guys, they're like oilers or something. I still have a few attack aircraft at Batavia. It would be great if we could get some hits in on some enemy high value targets like tankers. I don't have any other intel around here at the moment. We do have in SIGINT. What do we have here? Eh. Not a lot. Not a lot going there. I don't have a lot else to show. I mean, we guess we should look at the troops at uh, Mindanao here. These guys held out and fought valiantly, but are basically out of supply now. 
108 supply in the 102nd Filipino Army Division. They need 850 for normal supply. So these guys are at like one eighth supply. There's nothing left in the depots. The rest of these units are at zero. This base is going to collapse the next time he attacks. Hopefully he just doesn't know they have that much, they have that little supply. Meanwhile, supply is starting to be an issue for some of the troops at Clark Field. None of the, the main combat units, though. All the combat units are still at more than full supply. I don't have any subs really in a position to provide supply in into here. Or, or Mindanao for that matter. Troops at Ambon held out. Sparrow Battalion still doing their job. <laughs> Just drop some crayons and they'll be fine. We might actually be able to drop some supply into Bataan from Burma with some Catalinas. I think for transport routes, you get like very generous ranges, but I could be wrong about that. Let's see. So these guys are maximum range of 75. If I were to do supply transport, could I hit Bataan? I could. So I could fly supplies from Rangoon into Bataan via PBY Catalinas if I wanted. Rangoon has a ton of supply. We have several cargo ships coming in here, 3,400 here in this group, 43,000 in this group, 16,000 here. So we could fly some supply into Bataan that way. Probably not enough to make a difference, but might help. Okay. Yeah. So I think that's all we've got here for this particular turn. I don't think there's a lot else to share here, guys. Tankers finished unloading at Perth. We can take a look at the Repulse and Prince of Wales status. 255 more days for the Prince of Wales. 33 for the Repulse. We're starting to get some additional supplies coming toward Rangoon from Cape Town. We also do have a few small troop units heading that way. Dutch flying boats out of Batavia. I, can they reach that? Um, DO-24s. These have shorter ranges, the DO-24s. Yeah, they can't reach there. So only the American Catalinas can reach that far. Can I get supplies to the base about to fall? Are you talking about... Uh, Kaigen? Maybe. It would be easier. It's a smaller force, so it might be possible. Rather than Batan, can you reach Mindanao? No. So you can reach Bataan, but you can't reach Mindanao from Rangoon. Unfortunately. Um, no, there's not really anywhere closer. The rest of the bases are all Japanese. Maybe flying out of China. Maybe if I base them out of... Uh, Lucho, I could do that. But China's supply situation is generally pretty precarious in the first place. And flying missions like that will in incur a lot of operational losses, won't actually transport that much in the way of supply. And uh, uh, 
probably are not worth it. Will you Mercury and Maverick Kempfer? Thank you very much for the follows. Damn it, the Dodgers took a one-run lead, but the Brewers have the bases loaded. Nice. Nobody out yet either. Get a run! And he struck out. Damn it. All right. Um, so, not sure there's a lot else. This is kind of a, a quiet but active turn. Like, active in that there were a lot of enemy air attacks and a lot of things going on. Major battle on Mindanao. But quiet in the sense that I don't have a lot of stuff to do this turn. Um, so I think, you know, that being said, that's probably going to do it for our look at war in the Pacific. I can try and, and off screen. I'll see if there's any way to push more supplies into Mindanao or, but, or Bata Batan. We can try and see that. I, the problem is like I could base some of the Dutch guys, uh, the Dutch transports out of other bases. Like there is one base in New Borneo. There is one base in Celebs or in, in New Guinea that might be able to get me up there, but I don't have, the problem is I don't have supplies to transfer from those bases. Those, base, those bases are barren. So Batavia and Rangoon are two of my major sort of supply centers that have more sustainable levels of supply, and they can't reach Mindanao. Uh, China does have some supply, but it would really be... I, I think it would be a negligible impact, especially at Bataan, where we've got way more troops um, that the amount of supply required would be much greater. Um, but we'll see. I'll think about it a little bit. That being said, I don't think I really have anything else to discuss in this replay. So, again, an active but quiet turn. So we'll see, Southern. I, I need to think about it. Maybe we'll send a bombing raid on Bangkok, but I don't imagine it'll accomplish much even if we do, if we get like 15 bombers over the base. We just don't have enough bombers to really make a major impact yet. Um, but we'll look at that. That might be something worth sort of keeping him on his toes. But with that being said, that's going to do it for this episode of War in the Pacific, Admiral's Edition, my Let's Play series against Lieutenant Rainbow Slash. I hope you guys are enjoying this series. Please leave your thoughts down below, and we'll see what the near future has in store for us. Until then, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I'm out.